I was gonna wait a few days before I did this video because I think it's one of my best AI agent setups I have ever done. Uh, so yeah, but I got a bit too eager to show this off. So yeah, this is just gonna be more of like a preview. I'm gonna explain some details, but basically we're just gonna run it a few times, see the results, and hopefully you can get inspired. So let me just quickly walk you through the workflow here. So we're gonna start off with a source. In our case, it's gonna be TechCrunch. And we're gonna end up with a fully published YouTube video, fully autonomous, with help of some AI agent workflows. So you can see the first thing we need to do is get a story. So we're gonna use Gemini 2.0 Flash, the new API. I've been really impressed by this, uh, by the way. Super cheap, super reliable, so definitely go try that out. We might do an updated video on this API later. So we use this to get the story. And when we have the story, we're gonna feed that as context over to DeepSeek R1. Uh, that is gonna write the script. I tested a few models and I found DeepSeek's uh, creative writing the best. From that, we're gonna take the script over to 11 Labs. We're gonna create a voiceover for our video. From the, that the voiceover file, we're gonna use OpenAI's Whisper to create these .srt files or captions. And uh, we're gonna use OpenAI's O3 Mini to edit and assemble the video. Uh, I tried a few models here too, and the O3 Mini model was uh, the best one to run these advanced commands we use to edit the video. And finally, we're gonna use Gemini 2.0 Flash again to pick a thumbnail for the video and actually run the Google API to upload the video. So basically, the idea here is that we take a source AI news in our case, turn it in around this full AI agent workflow and we end up with a published YouTube video with a thumbnail, title, description and everything. So it's fully autonomous, all hands off and so far I've been pretty happy with the results. There are some things we have to prepare uh, in advance. Uh, I might go through that in a different video but I will show you like a snippet of it now, what you have to prepare uh, in advance to make this work. But let's just head over to Cursor, let's run this a few times and look at the results. Here in Cursor, again, you can see the full workflow. The first step is to get the story, generate the script, generate the voice, we're gonna generate the captions, assemble the video, get the title and description. I think I forgot that step, but we also write those and we upload the video to YouTube. Uh, so what we can do now, basically, since we have everything lined up, we can just run uh, uh, python.main. Okay, so when we run this now, you can see we are actually getting the story. We are scraping the TechCrunch headlines, analyzing headlines with AI. So we are using Gemini to actually pick uh, one of the stories we get up that sounds interesting. And here you can see we picked uh, OpenAI's ex-CTO Mira Murati recruited founder John Schulman. Okay, that's fine. We can go with that. And here you can see we are getting into step one, generating the script. So this is gonna be R1. We are running this. So we are using some reasoning tokens, right? We are going through the, yeah, the full step. And here we're gonna start. The AI arms race just uh, hit the hyperdrive, former OpenAI CTO Mira Mirati. Okay. So we're just gonna do the story and R1 now is gonna write the full script for us that we are gonna send over to 11 labs that we will use in our video. So let's just let this script run through and then we can move on to the next step. Okay, so now the script was generated right. We are also doing some kind of regex on the script because if we open it now, you can see we removed all the thinking tokens, we remove all asterisks and things that kind of annoy the voiceovers. We basically are left with the pure text uh, what the uh, voice um, 11 labs is gonna say right and we send that over so let's just let this cook and we'll be back when the script is over and we are on to step three here so now you can see we are generating the caption this is also important because uh, the agent or the AI agent that is gonna pick the clips for the video needs to know what kind of captions we have so the .srt is a great format for this. You can see we started editing the video now that it's 198 seconds and we're gonna use 81 clips. So if we look at the .srt file, you can see here we have this nice format. Two seconds, we have four seconds and we have the text 
and we have the timing. So this means that we can match up the clips uh, and align those clips with the content of the voice, right? So you can see while we are editing the video now, uh, this is going to take... I'm running is on my NVIDIA GPU, so it's pretty quick. Doesn't take too long, maybe like a minute or something for a three minute video. So I'll be back when this is done. Okay, so you can see now we are just in the final parts of editing the video here. This shouldn't take too long. So I'm just gonna let this run and then we're gonna move on to step five. That is actually writing the title and the description. We basically feed the, the script as context and create some kind of title from a system message we have, right? And you can see AI Exodus, ChatGPT Mastermind, Jumps Ship, what's coming next will terrify you, okay? And the description is AI Shockwave, ChatGPT Architect, John Schulman, uh, Defected, okay, something, something. We save that to YouTube Info. And now we are starting our upload. So you can see the upload was successful. We picked the thumbnail based on the content, so we picked thumbnail shocking1.png and the process was completed. So if we head over to YouTube now and we refresh our studio here, you can see we have a new video here coming up. So this is uh, AI Exodus, we have the thumbnail, we have the video. So I'm just gonna let this video um, complete the upload and let's watch it. Okay, so that was done. So let's open up the video and watch uh, like uh, some 30 seconds or something. The AI arms race just hit hyperdrive. Former OpenAI CTO Mira Marathi is building something big and she's pulling the original architects of ChatGPT into her orbit. John Shulman, the co-founder who helped birth ChatGPT. Okay, so you can hear that when we switched over to OpenAI. You will see this uh, more clearly in my, in my second video I'm gonna show you. But when we switch to like ChatGPT here, we pull up a clip from Sam Altman, right? And she's pulling the original architects of ChatGPT into her orbit. John Shulman, the co-founder who helped birth ChatGPT, just left Anthropic after five months to join her shadowy new venture. This isn't corporate musical chairs. This is a strategic strike. Shulman's own words say it all. He called this new opportunity extremely compelling. Okay, so we're not gonna go through this video now. Uh, you can watch this later if you want to. But what I wanted to show you is, I think we see it better in this video I did earlier today. Okay, so we already have 16 views. So let me pull up this video. The AI train. Here you can see it much more clearly that I kind of trained or train the AI to pick the clips that kind of matches up with the um, uh, what is in the voiceover, right? So let's watch this and you can clearly see this. The AI transparency wars just escalated. OpenAI's latest move with its O3 mini model is a game changer. And it's all thanks to pressure from rivals like China's DeepSea. For the first time, ChatGPT users are- So there you kind of saw it, right? We said we started with OpenAI here. OpenAI's latest move with its O3 mini model is a game changer. And it's all thanks to pressure from rivals like China's DeepSea. See, we went from OpenAI to DeepSea, right? For the first time, ChatGPT users are getting a front row seat to the model's actual reasoning process. And here you can see actual reasoning process. Then we pull up like a clip uh, from uh, DeepSea reasoning, uh, DeepSea R1 and O3 mini with the new reasoning capabilities uh, where we can show it. No more vague summaries. OpenAI says this update lets you... And then we switch to uh, Sam Altman again from OpenAI. Follow the model's reasoning, giving you more clarity and confidence in its responses. We went back to the reasoning, so you kind of get the point, right? It's quite clearly to see that uh, with the setup I have, the AI uh, can pick the right clips at the right time. And we can make a video that is pretty engaging uh, if you just want to make... Uh, turn some news articles into videos. So for me, this is working uh, much better than I thought and I've been super excited about this. Uh, so why don't we do... I want to do one more video. So let's see how this turns out, right? So let me start this uh, uh, main again and let's see where we end up it in the end here with a new video. Okay, so uh, it's almost done now. We're just uploading this to to YouTube. This is kind of the final part.
We are picking AI photos are a lie. Google's fix makes it worse. Okay, I don't even know what that is about. It's something about uh, Google's AI photo uh, watermarks, okay? Uh, we picked Sundar1, that is the thumbnail. <laughs> uh, let's head over here and refresh this. I think this is a very weird thumbnail, yeah. So check out this thumbnail here. Shocking AI progress and you have the CEO here uh, holding his hands to his head. So kind of a parody here. <laughs> uh, I thought it was pretty funny. Uh, okay, but let's uh, listen to a few seconds of this video. It's still being uh, uploaded here, but let's try it. Imagine a world where every photo you see could be a lie, where reality is rewritten with a tap. Google just took a massive step into that future by adding invisible watermarks to AI edited images in photos. Starting this week, any picture touched by okay so that was good because we we have some clips of uh, Demis Sabes. he like he's the uh, CEO of Google DeepMind right their reimagine AI tool gets branded with synth ID here is a again. digital fingerprint designed to scream this isn't real but here's the kicker this isn't just about labeling edits it's okay so I like we picked the Google DeepMind here too that's good it's about the explosive rise of AI that's about to vaporize entire industries let's break it down but wait, Google's slapping watermarks on these Frankenstein images. Synth ID, built by DeepMind, embeds hidden markers even humans can't see. Sounds like a win for transparency, right? Maybe, but here's the problem. Google admits the system... Okay, so that's fine. <laughs> Maybe not the best, but like I said in, in my intro, this is... Uh... Pretty early version, I finished coding this setup today, so there's a bunch of stuff we can do with this. And yeah, I think it's gonna be great in the end. So a lot of promise for this AI agent workflow, and I'm gonna keep perfecting it. And at the end, maybe I'll try to make a YouTube channel with this to see if these videos can get views, or if this is something you should just use internally. Uh, for the code, I will probably be doing a member section uh, because I think I need a kind of big tutorial on this code. So I'm probably going to do that over on my member section. If this is something you really want, maybe consider becoming a member. I will probably upload the code to the GitHub and do a more in-depth tutorial when I have this nailed down over on my member section. Maybe we do something more on the main channel too, we'll see. Uh, but I hope you found this cool, hope this got you more excited about creating agentic workflows. Uh, yeah, I'm a bit in the way here now, but you can see this was kind of my ID. And I was so surprised I kind of got this to work, to work uh, on my first attempt. Uh, so this just shows how far these models have come and how we can use them. And I have also started, uh, I don't know if you saw it, but I have started picking out models for specific use cases. And this is something I kind of predicted or something I thought about at least a long time ago that in a few years we will have models that are better at one thing and like these reasoning models are maybe better at something and stuff. So we will see. Uh, but yeah, thank you for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope this got you excited about building. And yeah, we'll speak soon.